appears to be foreign to reality. He appears to be foreign to what is happening in Guyana. And he appears to be foreign to Parliament. Mr. Speaker, but I understand because it's his maiden speech, so I'll go easy with it. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Mr. Speaker, I strongly believe that a responsible government that claims to be the government for all the people of Guyana must present facts to the nation and should not mislead this honorable house with policy. And I say that because as sitting here listening to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, I began to feel that it was prior to 2015 that he was talking about. In confidence. Mr. Speaker, if my recollections are correct, I heard the Honorable Minister of Natural Resources stating yesterday that there was no local content policy for the oil and gas sector and they are now working on it. But Mr. Speaker, I can recall that a local content policy for the oil and gas sector was completed and launched in January of this year. A quick search on Google will confirm the statement uttered by the Honorable Minister is untrue. Why tell the untruth when it can be easily disputed and proven incorrect? Mr. Speaker, if one had taken time to carefully examine the AP and UAFC manifesto and the past budget presentation, one would have clearly seen that the documents provided a clear path for inclusive, green, economic, and social growth. A clear path to good life which focus on four pillars, namely the digital state, the petroleum state, the green state, and the educated state. And for your information, Mr. Hamilton, I am standing here representing approximately 7,000 Guyanese. And if you are going to multiply 7,000 by 31, you might very well end about 217,000 Guyanese. As was claimed, as was claimed, because my friends over there, they're not too certain if they are over on that side, illegal or illegal. But time will tell, Mr. Speaker. If you notice and recognize, yes, a lot of short term governance has taken place in Guyana. Mr. Donald Ramatel was the president for three years. You can say AP and UFC has been here for five years. Mr. Ali might very well be here for a short time too. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we in the APN UASC led by Mr. David Arthur Granger was always planning ahead, not only for five years, Mr. Speaker, but we had a decade of development plan. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, we 
were temporarily halted on the 2nd of August. Temporarily halted. As a result of fraudulent election process and results. And Mr. Speaker, I say fraud is fraud, according to my friend, Honorable Attorney General, Mr. Anil Mandela. Honorable, Honorable Member, I think you are now venturing into an area of uh, on parliamentary language. The issue of fraudulent elections has been... Uh, Thank you, Mr. I Speaker. Report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be so guided. I must at this time, Mr. Speaker, say to the people of Guyana that we on this side of the house will not tolerate or uphold anything that will bring division and disunity amongst our people. I say this to say, I say that to say this, Mr. Speaker, we the coalition family believe in social cohesion. And when and Mrs. Mrs. Speaker, I continue, and when and when anything happens to divide us as a people, we will not associate ourselves with such activities. Hence, Mrs. Speaker, the APNU AFC stands firm and resolute against any form of discrimination. Our reckless governance, as you might say. We have already begun to experience the beginning of the dark days. In less than 40 plus days under this new administration. You're right to say, oh, human safety. Mr. Speaker, human safety is again a growing concern. Territorial integrity is once again a growing concern. Job security is once again a growing concern. We must take very seriously the safety, the safety of our populace, especially the lives of our youth. Not because the other lives are not important, because our lives do matter. The lives of our people must be protected regardless of their creed, race, color, religion, or political persuasion. Mr. Speaker, our beautiful country has been plunged into a sad, sad situation. By the gruesome killing of the two Henry boys, Orlando Jonas and Harry Singh. I lament with the families and friends of the three young men. They're gone too soon. Maybe I should say two lives were taken too soon by the evil one. May their soul rest in peace. Mr. Speaker, this will remain in the minds of our young people for a very, very long time. Already many are asking, will there be justice for these boys? Will there be justice for these boys? Mr. Speaker, we also take very seriously our border security. Taika is a frontier village, and so are Aral, Parima, Etrimbang, 
in the Cayuni Mazaruni region and shows white water and biometer in the Barima Waini region and the town of Letem in the upper Takatu, upper Esquibu region. Mr. Speaker, these frontier villages deserve frontline treatment and they are not solitary outposts. These communities are integral to the national defense. They safeguard public health, communicable diseases, no, no borders. And already we are experiencing a growth in the numbers affected by COVID-19. Mr. Speaker, the death toll continues to rise. Where are the measures put in place in the so-called emergency budget to counter the infiltration of this dreaded disease through our porous borders? How many joint services men have been deployed to these communities? Mr. Speaker, or are they being misused to shoot pellets at peaceful protesters? Who are protesting for the human rights? I am sure any right-thinking Guyanese would have been appalled by the number of policemen who were deployed to my colleague member, Mr. Christopher Jones's home. Was there a pandemic in the public? Whatever the reason was, Mr. Speaker, there was no need to deploy 30 plus policemen to that location. I beg the members on the government side to get your acts together. Protect your people and do not drive fear into them. Mr. Speaker, PPP small c, which may be spelled out as pressuring poor people continuously. Now, they are in the driving seat. Now is your opportunity to prove your worth as an inclusive government as you claim to be for all the people of Guyana. And not only to, our, to your supporters. Take pattern. Take pattern from the APNU ALC. Mr. Speaker, listening to the speakers talking about measures and projects which are catered for in this budget, some of them made I chuckle. I say chuckle because I am happy to hear that most of the projects initiated under the APNU AFC government, for example, in the water sector, and other headings, other headings will be continued. And therefore, I am happy about that. But you cannot claim, the present administration cannot claim, claim them as their projects. For those, were some of our projections in the, day, in the decade of our development plan. Mr. Speaker, let me now come to the budget presentation. It was in the right place under the desk. Mr. Speaker, as I began perusing the budget 2020 speech presented by the Minister of Public Works and not by the Minister of Finance as customary, it still boggles my mind as to why this is happening. Are they planning to appoint a bring backy, as my friend Mr. Ramsaran said, or a come backy to this position? I am anxiously awaiting to see who will be the Minister of Finance. 
Mr. Mr. Speaker, reversal of VAT on electricity and water, page 74 of 85. As I read that paragraph, I am still looking to see how exactly the pensioners, who are their guardians, some of them, most of them, and keepers of our rainforest, the beauty of Guyana, how are they standing to benefit from reversal of VAT and electricity, and, on electricity and water? I am speaking about pensioners in Chinoring, Mr. Speaker, pensioners in Kaikan, pensioners in Philippi, in Seabow, in Commission, in Isabak, in Kurkubaru, just to name a few of our indigenous communities. How exactly will they benefit from this reversal of VAP? Well, Mr. Speaker, they have not benefited from the previous VAP exemption, and they will never benefit from this present VAP exemption on electricity and water. You may ask the question why? Because many of our pensioners in the indigenous communities still rely on the water from the rivers creeks and springs to do their cooking, washing, and bathing. Mr. Speaker, it therefore means that this measure has no absolute meaning to my grandparents living in those communities. They will never benefit from this measure as long as electricity and metered water is not made accessible to them. So, so, Mr. Speaker, the government has a task to correct their figures. Perhaps, perhaps, what I can suggest to this honorable house and to my friends over there is that they be given an allowance to their pension. That, Mr. Speaker, will put more money into their pockets. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, another measure that I will, I wish to elaborate on is the measure that is mentioned on page 75 of 85. Paragraph 6.6. .6. And I quote, Mr. Speaker, it is crucial now more than ever for government to stimulate the economy. I am pleased to announce that our engagements with the local banking sector have been fruitful and government will be granting corporate tax relief to the banks for low-income loans, which will allow low-income households to borrow up to an additional two million at a lower interest rate. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, what alternative measures are in place for indigenous brothers and sisters who are living in their communities to access loans when they have no collateral to get a bank loan? Moreover. No, more so, you are referring to low-income households. What about low-income households? For many of the households in the hinterland have no source of income. 
and we all know that so far. Again, I wish to reiterate, take pattern from the APNU AFP coalition. Who in collaboration with the IDB delivered completed three bedroom houses to 25 households in Sibai. 21 households in the upper Majuruni, region number seven, and many more in other hinterland regions under the sustainable hinterland housing project. Mr. Speaker, when I was tasked with the oversight of this project in the Ministry of Communities then, I quickly asked what was the criteria used for selection and how come only regions one and nine are benefiting? As though it was only meant for certain people living in certain areas. I was told, Mr. Speaker, it was too expensive to execute the projects in regions seven and eight. However, Mr. Speaker, I am proud to say today that under the APNU AFC, we made it happen. And I am clear on the honorable ministers, Minister Kroll and Minister Rodriguez, to continue the project and expand it to the people of the Potaro Seperuni region. They too deserve a home of their own. Prior to 2015, Mr. Speaker, there seemed to be no increase in the purchasing power of the populace, which is pivotal to the quality of good life for the individuals and families. Recognizing this, Mr. Speaker, the coalition government went ahead to increase the minimum wage from $39,570 to $64,200 for the first three years in governance. And presently, Mr. Speaker, it is at $70,000, Guyana dollars. For 23 years, the PPPC was dragging their feet on the nation's progress. And if one does a comparative analysis, one will clearly see that we had begun working assiduously towards reversing poverty to prosperity. On that note, Mr. Speaker, I crave your indulgence in allowing me to highlight some of the progress made as we strive to improve the welfare of our hinterland residents. How can you say too little or nothing was done to improve the lives of our indigenous brothers when the AP and UAFC coalition made humongous efforts in providing more than 20 communities with portable water in the Rupununi. And if you want to know where, Mrs. Speaker, Ruperti, Shulinab, Aishalton, Yerapawi, Iowa, Tigerton, Silver City, Simoni, Anaputa, just to name a few and chinnowing in the upper Mazaruni. These persons now have access to portable water. Some of them are heading into their homes. And many of our pensioners are happy, they're appreciative, they're grateful, for they can now bathe at their homes. Mr. Speaker, We, Mr. Speaker, I must remind my honorable members on that out. APNU AFC 
is an inclusive government. Whether you are affiliated to us or not, we will provide for you. And we have done that happily. Mr. Speaker, there was so much done for our Hinterland brothers and sisters within a short period of time, for which they are very much grateful. Mr. Speaker, we in the APNU-AFC government, through the Guyana Land and Survey, distributed land leases to residents of Kwakwani, Kildonia Nurse, Nurni in Region 6, 36 of them for the first time. Residents of Port Kaituma and Matches Ridge were also recipients. Mr. Speaker, it was also under this administration that the first ever diploma in land administration was launched in partnership with the University of Guyana. With 20 persons from the Commission and others from GGMC and CHNTA were offered to do those courses. Mr. Speaker, it was under this, also under this administration that a regional disaster risk management center was established in the town of Lepem. In fact, it is now 95% completed. It just needs electricity and water. Mr. Speaker, isn't that development? What will you call that, Mr. Speaker? We have improved the capacity of our people at the community and regional level so that they can, they can better deal with whatever disaster comes in their community. Mr. Speaker, and if I am to continue, you would have heard from my colleague, Minister Kati, former Minister of Telecommunications, Mrs. Kati Hughes, that more than 70 ICT hubs were established in our indigenous community. Several primary schools are now connected. But of course, there is always a challenge. And there is always room for improvement. But I want to assure the nation that we have started and we expect nothing less than PDPC government to continue and to complete and to ensure that all schools, all our schools in the indigenous communities are connected and receive equitable and equal education as anyone else around the country. One minute notice. Mr. Speaker, in my conclusion, I wish to quote from the former competent finance minister, Mr. Winston Jordan. And I quote, budget measures are private sector oriented rather than for the people, end of quote. Mr. Speaker, I wish to offer suggestions and recommendations to this House, to this Honorable House. I'm asking the government, as I said before, they are in the driving seat. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for. I am asking the government to be an inclusive government for the people of Guyana. Serve the people in humility. Serve the people with love. And serve your country 
our beautiful country, Guyana, with dignity and integrity. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.